Hello, I'm Jack, and this is the first video under my channel's new name, Ambient Bass Creations. This is also the first time I'm talking on camera, so I apologize in advance. I will get better the more I do it. The bass is a low, boomy instrument, and it's just naturally muddy on its own. So stacking effects such as reverb, delay, modulation to create ambient music with a bass can come with a challenge that I personally faced, which is too much bass boom that's overpowering and having my bass signal be too muddy and not very clear and basically have trouble cutting through all of the effects. So in this video, I'm gonna go over my preamp settings and then talk a little bit about high pass filters, which both help with bass boom and muddiness. And then I'm gonna kinda breeze through my compressor settings uh, so that I can get into how I create ambient music with my bass and effect pedals while I actually create a piece of music. Feel free to skip around using the chapter markers in the description. Also in the description, there will be links to everything that I use in this video, just in case you wanna check those out. But that's enough out of me, enjoy. I wanna go over the first few pedals that I use to build my bass tone before I send my signal into a whole bunch of effects. So down here I have my smaller utility board, which feeds directly into my bigger ambient board. And first there is the amp summoning box by JHS. This has no effect on my tone, it just allows me to have two inputs coming out of one output uh, so that I can plug in multiple instruments uh, or my iPad, uh, but that's why that's there. That goes into the Polytune 3 by TC Electronic with a buffer. Then that goes into Vintage Ultra Preamp by Dark Glass. Then into the Kali 76 Bass Compressor by Origin FX. And then that goes into the VP Junior uh, Passive Volume Pedal by Ernie Ball. So the Vintage Ultra and Cali 76 bass compressor, those two are my dynamic duo for creating my bass tone uh, before I create ambient music. So I'm just gonna do a quick example of what my bass sounds like with both of these pedals off and then what it sounds like with both of them on so you can hear the difference. Here is with both of them off. <laughs> Pretty low in volume, uh, not very clear. Here's with both of them on. Much louder, much more crisp. I'm gonna throw on some reverb just to hear what that sounds like from Night Sky. I can still hear the crisp um, plucking of the string and also have that deep low wind. I'm using the low B string and E string on this bass with reverb and it's just it's coming out really clear and nice and I'm, I still have that low end intact. Um, it, this comes in really handy once I start uh, stacking effects to create ambient music. Uh, the preamp, as you can, you can already just tell just by looking at it, the bass and the lows are over here and the high mids and the treble uh, are over here. So the bass and the low mids are over here and the high mids and the treble are over here. So I'm bringing down the lows and bringing up the highs. I have a frequency switch right here that you can select between three different frequencies and then adjust with this knob. I have it on uh, 500 hertz uh, because it is less mid-heavy, it less muddy, it's also closest to the brighter side of this frequency spectrum. So I have that set there and then this attack um, toggle 
in the down position. It actually controls the treble, even though the treble's over here, this um, uh, affects the treble. And in the down position, it is a cut. In the middle position, it is a boost. And in the up position, it's remain flat. And so I keep it in the middle position for a boost. And then it's the same for over here for the highs, frequency, and then adjust. Um, but I have this grunt toggle, which controls the lows. So you can either remain flat in the bottom, middle is a cut, and uh, a boost is in the up position. I uh, cut the lows right here. So bringing down the lows over here and here, bringing up the highs over here and here. Uh, so I find this necessary because once I start stacking a whole bunch of effects onto my bass, um, it's, it gets harder and harder to hear the clarity of the bass, and then the low end becomes more prone to bass boom and muddiness. Uh, so these are the settings that I have found to be most successful at uh, building ambient soundscapes with my bass for my uh, preamp. Then that goes into the Kali 76 bass compressor, which I've played a lot of compressors. And um, this one, I really like this one because it is quiet and because of the high pass filter knob. So I used a high pass filter even before I got this and that is another great tool to control bass boom moneyness with a bass. Um, I, I had a separate pedal that went under your board. It was the, the small one by Brighton, if you know it, and or Broughton. Um, and so, uh, but this, this guy has it already built in the unit. And if you don't know what a high pass filter is, um, it basically just lets all the highs pass. So as you turn it up, it will filter out the lows. So why on earth would you want to do that with a bass guitar? Um, I love the bass, I love the low end, and I love the sound and the feel. But um, in a general way, if cutting, just shaving off uh, a little bit of the low ends actually makes for a, a better sound, a better sounding bass, uh, especially for when I record, um, there are bass frequencies that are just, you know, just shaving off the, the lowest of the lows um, actually improves the signal. And, uh, but for this compressor, why they included it in the unit is because bass frequencies actually trigger the compressor to over-compress. So having this knob all the way down, you're letting all the low-end frequencies pass through, and so turning it up will actually shave off the frequencies that are triggering this to over-compress and squash, um, and which allows for a better um, tone. So I'm gonna try to give an example of this knob. I'm gonna bring up my compression setting. I'm gonna bring down my dry and I'm gonna start with the high pass filter all the way down. So right here, the lows are going, once I start turning the knob, the lows are gonna start, um, start to filter out. Not all the lows, but it'll start filtering out and then the bass signal it'll go from very squashed and then you'll start hearing that the bass signal will like come back like come back to life and all while keeping the same compression setting so let's just try that okay i'm just gonna like wail on the e string and turn the knob at the same time uh so hopefully this picks up on the recording. So all the lows are passing through. Pretty squashed. See, it's, it's nice, it's coming back, it's coming in. Even 
if I dig in really hard, it's still squashed. Then it just comes back. So this is a very nice feature that I like a lot. Um, and then the, just the other settings, I, I don't compress it too much. I like bringing in my dry, a lot of my dry, and then this goes um, halfway, sometimes even a little over halfway. But fast attack, slow release, and um, those are, this is basically my settings. Um, for both of these, the Vintage Ultra and the compressor, well, just the Vintage Ultra, um, I like to set this the way it is, and um, that really gives me enough room to kind of adjust with my onboard preamp uh, to adjust the lows. If I want to bring them up a little bit, I can do so on my bass. If I want to adjust the highs, I can do so on my bass. And so the Vintage Ultra, the, the preamp, that's where I like to kind of, that's my mindset going into setting that is I'm going to leave that there as long as I can because I do make adjustments, but I want to leave that there as long as I can so that I can make adjustments on my bass itself. So those are pretty much my settings. Those are, these are the, these are the pedals that I use to build this tone or my tone uh, before I get into all of the effects that I, I use to create my meditation videos. So let's get into that next. Okay, so now it's time for the ambient board. Um, I'm not gonna go through every single pedal and all the modes, all the functions, how they all work. Um, this is going to be more of how I uh, make uh, the soundscapes that I do in my videos and um, how I use the pedals um, to create. Uh, so first I'm going to go through um, my entire pedal chain all the way back to my DAW. And then I'm also going to uh, create a soundscape while uh, as I go, as I explain. Uh, so... Let's just get started with that. Um, the first pedal in Shane is Super Ego Plus uh, by Electro Harmonics. Uh, just really quick, this, what I use this for is I, I uh, am able to drone a, um, a single note drone that goes on and on forever, and I can manipulate it with the onboard effects that are on it, um, but it also has an effects loop, and I have Fabricat and A7 Reverb, in the effects loop. Um, I mean, the Fabricat is a crazy multi-effects unit that has all kinds of reverse delays and glitch and, you know, pitch, just all, all kinds of stuff that you can uh, uh, mess with a drone with. And then I have a reverb right after it to kind of wash it out uh, if I want to. So that's why they're there. We have Super Ego Plus and in the effects loop, Fabricat and A7 Reverb. After Super Ego Plus, it goes into Syntax Error 2. Syntax Error 2 goes into Gen Loss, Gen Loss into Sunlight, Sunlight into Air Patch. I have Lo Fi Junkie in Air Patch's effects loop. If you don't know what Air Patch is, it's a wireless effects loop that you can plug any pedal into it and uh, control the pedal by just this wireless button. I uh, really just turn it on and off, but it has like three different modes. Uh, it's actually really cool. So, um, that's that after air patch goes into dark star, dark star, dark star goes into count to five, count to five goes into lore, lore goes into the parallel mixer, tri parallel mixer. This controls the three loopers I have here. Um, and I use habit as a looper and that is. Habit is in channel three, blooper is in channel two, and mood is in channel one. Uh, the output of the parallel mixer, it goes into Condor, and the Condor goes into Microcosm. Microcosm is the first stereo pedal, and everything is stereo after this. Uh, Microcosm goes into Synesthesia, Synesthesia into Night Sky, Night Sky into Enzo, and Enzo into Volante. Volante goes into uh, ditto times four, oh, excuse me, ditto times two, 
uh, looper by TC Electronic that's down on here on the floor. This goes in, still stereo, it goes into two bona fide buffers by TC Electronics, which are actually zip tied to the leg of my table that this board is on. And then I have two instrument cables that run out of the outputs from the buffers all along and behind my desk. Uh, and then the, they go into uh, my line isolator, uh, Miso Plus by Pinstripe. And then that goes into uh, Universal Audio Apollo Times 4 audio interface, which then goes into my DAW Logic. Um, I do have uh, UA's council uh, software up with um, plugins of uh, AMP, um, Ampeg amp uh, that does have EQ uh, adjustments on it, and it does also help with the background noise, uh, brings it down. Uh, so that is the complete chain that I have running right now. And so when I sit down and I want to create, um, the first thing I do is build a reverb. Night Sky by Strymon is my go-to. Uh, with this and it has so many options to choose from you can literally just build your own reverb um, and there's some delay and some other weird stuff but the um, reverb it's it's so nice to have this um, it might look uh, daunting but literally everything is on the unit it says exactly what the knobs are going to do right here on the unit so it's actually really easy uh, to learn and so just really quick, um, the reverb I did build already. And so I have a modulated reverb. Uh, the depth is pretty high and length is, I mean, sorry, speed, slow speed. And then it gives you the options to choose from what waveform you want. I have it on random. If there's a random option on a pedal, then I am into that pedal. So that's what I'm going to use today. And then the size, I have it maxed out. It's going to be a big reverb, long length, long decay. And then, um, oh, and then a shimmer. I have a, just a slight shimmer right here uh, that is going to make it sound really beautiful. But this thing has a dry blend knob. Uh, this comes in very handy, especially later on when uh, there's multiple loops going and a lot going on. Uh, you can bring in your bass and and actually hear your bass. So there's also a dry blend knob right here on the mixer. So both of these come in really handy, but I will be adjusting the reverb and the um, definitely the dry blend knob or this one uh, throughout as we create. And since I already have built this um, after this, then it's really about setting a solid foundation for uh, my creation. And so I usually use a drone or loopers uh, to set that foundation. Setting, I, I have used both at the same time. Um, lately, I haven't. Um, I have found that it is very easy to get out of control and have a lot of commotion or too much commotion uh, when both are going on it's very washy it, it's too washy it's um so i haven't done it in a while um but um as of today as of right now i am only going to use the loopers that's just what i've been into lately especially since habit came out so that's what i'm going to do today i'm going to use these loopers uh, to set that that foundation and how i'm going to start with blooper blooper um is going to be more of an actual baseline loop so I like to have um, I like to have like an actual uh, loop that you can actually hear my bass it's an actual pattern there's a rhythm to it um, I do use the modifiers and I completely mess with the baseline or sometimes I strum uh, a few chords or something like that um, but this I like to use blooper to have it's like clearly you can clearly hear the instrument. You can clearly hear that uh, the structure of a bass line or a uh, strumming of, uh, of chords. So that's what I use blooper for. Um, and then unlike 
mood I use for like flutter or very simple short loops uh, that are either like chirping, um, like really fast tremolo or something, or a like um, like a swelling reverse loop or something like that. So that's what that uh, what I'm going to use mood for, and that's what I usually use mood for. And then habit, habit. Um, I can set, I can uh, create like a three minute song. You're definitely going to hear my bass in this um, loop as well but i'm going to use the step speed modifier which is like a up octave pitch reverse delay it's uh, really beautiful it's really chimey um, and so that's going to be the main uh, main sound coming out of this you're definitely going to be able to hear uh, my bass but the the modifier the step speed modifier is um, is just so beautiful so that's what uh, habit is going to bring and uh, so yeah those three loops are going to set the the foundation for the ambient piece and yeah let's just get started i'm going to start with blooper first and let me just get my bass <laughs> Okay, so here's the reverb. This is what that sounds like. Sorry, I had some overdrive on. This is clean. There's a slight shimmer. And it's and there's movement in it that modulation so it's it's just a really big nice interesting reverb so for blooper three of these loopers and ditto times two um, when I make loops they're very simple very short very simple not too much commotion not a bunch of fancy stuff just um, keep it simple because as as I build and add things like microcosm and stuff like that it, it becomes a lot so keeping these loops very simple um, actually makes it a lot better and nicer in the long run or at towards the end so that's what I'm gonna do just a couple just just uh, just that okay everything looks good stability there's a little wobbling going on very subtle so I'm gonna use the first modifier it's engaged it is called um, dropper where parts of the loop will just drop I 
I can kind of set, whether it's kind of a rhythmic pattern or just kind of random. Like it drops out in random points or it drops out in somewhat of a structured pattern. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it here. More on the pattern side because the second modifier I just engaged. It is called, what's it called? Uh, scrambler. And it scrambles up the loop and kind of just picks up pieces from random spots and plays them. And I have this, I can either set it at, that it will scramble it up randomly in a ra random fashion or in a structured pattern, but I'm going to have that random. I have it just completely random. So it's, it's clearly a bass line. It, it, you can clearly understand that this is an instrument, uh, that this is a bass. Uh, but I just completely glitched it out with the the modifier, so it, it has it still has a rhythmic pattern to it, but it's also very unpredictable, which makes it much more interesting, uh, in my opinion. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna go with this. And the great thing about the parallel mixer is that I can record a loop in mood. And Mood will not record what's coming out of Blooper, so I can just I can record whatever I whatever I play into this without it picking up this. Um, so that's a great thing, and I can use Mood as what I how I usually use it is I do something super simple just a couple notes and then I use the tape mode and I can I can really stretch it out into this like long like zipping swell thing or I can chirp it out like it, it can sound like a like it's like chirping like a, like a little bird chirping or something like that uh, so let's do that I'm gonna bring this all the way down down so I have the most time to record. Slow it down, there it is. There it is, it's maybe a little higher pitch. There we go. That's a nice little chirp feature. So I can adjust the volume. I like it, I like putting it low, kind of as if it's in the background. I'm gonna keep the EQ dead in the center. And I'm gonna warm up blooper, the loop and bloopers. To make it warmer. I'm gonna turn it turn blooper down just a little bit. Okay. Okay, so that's great. That sounds really good. Now habit. Now habit, I'm going to 
I'm gonna switch manual dip switch on and the collect dip switch on collect dip switch makes it so that I can So I can play a three minute jam. It's memory's three minutes long, so I can play something for three minutes and then it'll just play that three minutes over and over and over again. And then I can manipulate that three minute loop using the spread and scan knobs and also the in and out and feed toggle. So I'll just, I'm gonna just show what, how that works. I'm going to do a three minute loop with the step speed modifier on that is engaged. I'm going to delete the memory, clear it, actually just clear the memory. And then everything looks good over here. And then it is 319. down this switch, switch makes that scanning kind of jumble effect and it records it. Habit is now just playing on its own. It is playing, it just started from the beginning of my three minute loop from when I started. And now I'm gonna shut this send knob. I'm gonna close it so that my playing does not affect this at all. It's just gonna play 
and I can I can play on top of it with my bass, and nothing will affect this loop. I have it, this toggle in the out position, or the yeah the out position. I could switch it to the feed position, but I like keeping it in the out position at least for right now, so that it will all the repeats will be the same, and everything will be even. So I'm just gonna keep it the way it is. Putting it over to feed, it will it will pick up all your all your knob adjustments. It'll record all of that stuff. I just want to keep it the way it is, but I do want to add a secondary repeat with a spread knob. So now there's two different repeats. Because I switched the manual dip switch, I can manually adjust with the scan knob where I want habit, what pieces to take, or how far back into the three minute loop I want habit to take pieces of the three minute loop and bring it forward and play it. So, right here is a quarter of the way through almost halfway through. And so it's a nice, beautiful loop. But it's unpredictable and interesting. So I'm gonna mess with the EQ, I'm going to make this brighter. Bring the volume down a little bit. And now I'm just kind of going to mix these two loopers. I want to bring up mood. Bring down blooper just a little bit. That sounds good to me. So now that I have a, a great foundation, what I want to do is I want to get these, all these mono pedals involved. Or not all, but uh, some. So I like using Dark Star and Night Sky together. I have a, a sunlight in uh, pass mode, which the right thick depth setting you can get some bubbly a bubbly textured reverb, which is really cool. And then this is in pitch mode, which is gonna give uh, some uh, un, uh, up octave uh, reverb in there. I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna use Lore with, yes, full, 100% wet, and I'm gonna do a swell loop with ditto times two. So I have a reverse delay and a reverse reverb on both reverb and delay, their feedback 
and decay are maxed out. Uh, no modulation, just smooth reverse delay and reverb. Let's see what that sounds like. Sounds really, really awesome. What about count to five? Count to five's reverse delay is my favorite re reverse delay that exists right now. some clipping right there. I'm going to turn down count to five a little bit. The upper corner camera just died, so that view will not be available anymore. But here is four together. Okay, so I really like that. I'm going to... I'm going to make a swell loop with ditto times two. But ditto times two is last in chain, so it will record all three loops as soon as I hit record on ditto times two, which I don't want. Um, I don't want that because if it records the loops while I'm playing and then I stop the recording, then it'll just replay that portion of all three loops going on, on or off or playing over and over and it'll just become a jumbled up mess because it'll play that portion that's recorded along with the actual three loops and it'll just get mixed together and not sound as good. So I'm going to turn off all three loops and I'm going to record just the, the simple two note swell loop into d ditto but I'm going to kind of have to judge the tempo that I want to do it at just kind of in my head and do that for the recording so I'm going to do a couple practice rounds to kind of figure out how far how, how fast or how much space in between the two notes I want so here it's just for practice. I want a lot of time in between each time I do that. About that, about that long in between, in between each other. Turn off all three loops. 
And then I'm gonna start the ditto times two swell loop. Right now. Okay, I'm gonna wait, try and wait the same exact amount of time before I stop the loop and have that just play over and over again. Okay. Let's bring in the loops. So timing definitely does not need to be perfect. This is an ambient creation. There are random things going on. So I'm sure how it sounds will be really nice. Okay, so there we go. There's that swell loop that's gonna come in and, and it sounds really good. Oh. So I turned everything off. I turned count to five, dark star, sunlight, and lore off. So now that we have all the loops, now I wanna all these loops, except for uh, Ditto times two, are going through Condor and Synesthesia. I like using these two as sort of a filtering um, uh, tool or tools. Uh, Condor has a bunch of options, low pass filter, frequency. Uh, I like to adjust the mid range um, uh, the, from from narrow to to wide to neutral I mean I can switch it to wide bring up the mids and kind of widen out widen everything out have it have more of a wide uh, feel to it and then I also like using synesthesia to add some chorus Dimension C in stereo, which chorus is just so beautiful, and it in, in stereo it opens up everything. It makes everything so much more wide, of course, but with chorus it adds a sharpness, a, a beautiful sharpness. So I have chorus and Dimension C going in Synesthesia. There are a ton of things in Synesthesia that you can choose from. There are arpeggiated um, effects that sound really interesting as well, but I'm just gonna keep it 
here because it just sounds so nice and and have a slow speed here with kind of a faster speed on the chorus to get kind of an underwatery movement. Sounds really, really good. And so after the filtering is adding bounce with Volante, I can add all the loops are going through Volante and you can set you can just add a delay line to all these loops. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit. And I'm going to bring down the repeats. It's a little, it's bouncy. And of course it's in stereo, so it opens it up even more. It opens up the whole thing, the whole piece, much more. And adjust the reverb, bring it down a little bit for a little more clarity. If I wanted to, I can I can just play on top of this. Use Gen Loss. Turn it on. So it won't affect the loops, my playing with Gen Loss, but it will go through Synesthesia and Volante. It will not affect Ditto. So I can just play on top of it. chorus and just leave the dimension C. Dimension C depth is full on full. Mix a little more than halfway. Slow speed definitely. Enzo also has a delay pedal in it, or just a delay in it, and I do have it on, so there's even more bounce.
play on top of this, but it will set off Enzo. Let's see what that sounds like. Turn Enzo off. And I'll switch over to Microcosm. Mosaic mode is, you can't go wrong with that mode, but I am actually going to try Glide. It has, it's a pitch shifting weirdness that's amazing. Uh, it's pretty much like, it's a lot like uh, Therme by Chase Plus. but you can also get really synthy effects. I'm not playing anything. The loops are setting microcosm off. Subdivision at the slowest. Bring up speed a little bit. There we go. It's like it's trying to say something. the same time. Interesting and peaceful piece of music. So what I'll do is I think I'm going to keep this going for a meditation video, but cut this video off, um, so if you do want to continue this, there will be a video for it. my go-to moves to in creating these soundscapes. I hope you enjoyed it.
Thank you for listening. Special thanks to Matt from Austria. He commented that he wanted to see a video like this, and I was already thinking about making a video like this, but it was his comment that really pushed me into uh, figuring out how I was going to do it and then actually doing it. So thank you, and uh, thanks to everybody who uh, has commented and who I've kind of been communicating with over my channel. Also, some of the links in the description are affiliate links, which means I do get a small commission uh, if anything's purchased through them. Uh, the, all the commission will just go right back into the channel um, to help me make more videos like this. And if you like this video, then consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you get notified whenever I do this again. Uh, but thank you so much for listening, and I wish you the best in your own creations.